superheroes and comic books, you know, you sort of go, well, what, what, how far will they go? And um, what is the last bit? What is the one thing that will make them change? And which brings me about talking about superheroes changing from who they are as superheroes and why they would become villains brings me to Injustice, the game. Very, very good game that came out. And um, later on, they did a, like a, a web only um, digital comic series. Then they, then they get it together and like, um, into single uh, single issue floppies and then they put it into hardcovers and also into trade paperbacks so they had a four-year run of that and i really really liked it i was i remember the reason i liked it was because way back in 2000 when i moved down to invercargill to do my studies for the um in 2003 uh, around about june i went down a bit six months early to look for work and get settled in and of course, I did get um, look for work, and I found work. Um, and because they had just looked at my CV and said, "Wow, you have a lot of different um, uh, jobs that you have done as, since you were 17." Because that's when I started, actually 16, when I started working. So it's because um, I had left home just before I turned 17. So you've got all these experiences. You've been a baker. You've been a tile salesman. You've been a tiler. You've um, you've been a chef. You um, you've trained to be a chef. You're an artist. You, you've been a woodworker, you know, and you've done so many different things. And um, so it was easy for me to get a job pretty quickly. I think within a month I was able to get around to getting a job, maybe maybe a month and a half, if I remember right. So, yeah, so, but then to get myself settled in there, there was a comic shop there. And um, so I basically used to hang out there when I didn't, have, because what are you going to do for the first six weeks when you have no nothing else to do? And you're looking for work, and when you don't have, you know, when you finish going to planning up city, how do you hang out with people? So I started hanging out at the comic shop that was there. It was a really cool shop, uh, you know, and got to meet a lot of people. Got into uh, tabletop gaming, like um, I think it was The Simpsons, as well as like um, the Risk, because I had a great love for Risks, and I've had a love for Risk forever. I just haven't had a game for a couple of years now, and probably half a decade now, having a decent game, and so. One thing I asked the guy behind the counter at that time, I said, like, I just can't stand Bat... Oh, sorry, Joker. I just can't stand Joker. I, I, you know, he's such a horrible, horrible villain. Why don't they get rid of him? You know, why don't they just get rid of this thing? And then, you know, this person that's just such an evil, evil villainous character. And the guy said to me behind the counter, um, you know, he was I think it was about 10 years younger than me, or maybe five years younger than me. He said, you know, it's because he's such a such a main character he's been there from the start and so on and um, so i remember that and so when injustice came out i didn't really know much about the game as such um and but i think it was one of the main my first xbox games that i might have bought because i'm not much of a gamer as such and i still find it hard because of my wrist being injury I, I have a problem with um moving and some people have it worse than me of course but i have a problem with like you know being quick on my fingers with, when it comes to the controllers so when i started reading what the theme of the story was i was like and just as gods among us what you know what is the main plot of this and the main plot is this of course if you haven't seen it uh please come back in about a couple of minutes or if you haven't played the game or even read the comic book okay so um so basically what happens is that Superman, um, Lois Lane is pregnant uh, and she's on a ship um, doing a journalism thing, if I remember right. And it's in, oh no, she's on a metropolis and the ship docks or something, if I remember right. I'm just a bit slightly off my uh, thing there. And she, she passes away because of what Joker does. He blows up metropolis. He like basically sets off a nuke. And Superman loses it. And this is the first time we actually really, really see Superman turn evil. Uh, of course, he doesn't turn evil, evil right there. But he basically puts his fist through. Um, he finds where, uh, he searches for Joker. He finds where he is. I, I think he might have used Batman to find him. And he goes there and rips out. He puts. I think he puts his fist through Joker's heart. And I was like, whoa. 
and I and I was like, this is just brilliant. You know, it's just talking about you know just changing the game, and and it's basically talking about how Superman would behave as a human because I've I haven't liked Superman for decades because of his his uh, Boy Scout sort of nature where he doesn't because he's he's been raised to be a Boy Scout right a good boy uh, you know uh, raised by elder parents and such and such and he's always been taught to do right over wrong com completely even to detriment to other people so that's why I always say always thought well why does he let him go why does he just you know send him to jail and whatever and of course he's batman's villain but main villain but he just you know loses it and so then he decides well i've had enough of the of the environment and um you know i've, I've had enough of these villains and so i'm tired of letting villains run loose putting them in jail and then they just come back out break out and they just come around to carry on with the thing so that is the basis of injustice right so it's, this is just you know so the heroes have failed and so on right so villains take over i mean sorry so superman becomes villainous and batman has to go up against as he is goes up against um superman and superman gets people on his side and batman gets people on his side and it's such an interesting interesting um twist of turns when it comes to the hero genre and especially when it comes to the big two and the whole Justice League. And this is a really, really, I mean, look at that, right? Look at that look on the face of um, Superman. So he becomes like the world police, all right? He basically becomes a communist dictator. And that's, and that's basically where, you know, uh, Jonathan Hickman's um, um, X-Men's at now. It's like where, where with, um, you know, the, Kokoa becomes a, a self-sufficient state where it says we don't want any connection with the world and so on. And we're just going to look after ourselves and close this up and becomes North Korea or communist China. Okay, so that's basically injustice, right? And the game, of course, you know, started with the game and Tom Taylor, the Aussie guy, um, did the, um, the, um, the writing on this. And I think that there were several writers on this. So uh, Mike S. Miller is one of the... Um, guys over um was a colorist on this so you can see the amazing work and um and um yeah so he's he's, he's doing his own independent thing right now and he's been out of the out of the mainstream for a little while there okay 